We're very fortunate to be here speaking about China right when we've had this very, very important meeting and just literally uh, less than 24 hours, or about 24 hours after we got um, the, the more detailed document out of the uh, third plenum of the 18th Communist Party Committee, Central Committee. Um, uh, it's, so it's really, I mean, I think we have this amazing opportunity. I wanted to ask um, each of our panelists very quickly what you thought when you were reading that document, that very long, uh, we were talking about how long that document was, when you're looking at that or you're reading about it, what did you think, each of you, briefly, what uh, was the most important reform that the government's talking about? Uh, before we get into more of a discussion, I'm just very interested in uh, what you guys, what you think. Maybe we'll start with Ms. Minister Councillor Joe. What was the one thing in that document that you thought, wow, that's really, really important? Um, I think the most important aspect of the reform is the market. The market is now giving a decisive role to play. It's a kind of basic role. So in the future, the market will decide the allocation of resources, uh, decide the prices. This is a, actually a very important step forward. Victor. I think it strikes me as being a practical document um, that they have signaled their intention to deal with certain needing problems uh, which they believe in the constraint of the current politics are doable. So uh, the fanciful ones have, uh, are, are not quite ready. Um, the practical ones are there and uh, the signals are pretty clear. Can I put you on the spot slightly um, because you also mentioned this shift of language from basic to decisive. I mean, as a journalist, we, we don't like these kind of weasel words. We look at what's the difference really between basic and decisive? I mean, what in practical terms do you think it's going to mean um, the market playing a, a, a decisive role rather than a basic role? Because basic, they also mean fundamental, right? And both of either, either mm -hmm. of you. Um, then I think we have to use the Chinese word. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, if, you, if we look at the Chinese word, I think it, 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 it gives you the different feeling. And um, decisive, in my view, means uh, um, the market will have a overriding role you know, within the socialist Chinese system. Right? Um, but these are signals that comes out that needs to be fleshed out uh, in coming months. Mm. And, um, but I think it is, uh, it is a very strong signal. Hey, Minister Councillor Joe, in practical terms, what does it mean to go from basic to decisive? I mean, what, what sectors are we going to see more mar market forces? Uh, I think in the past, up to now, the government actually has played a very important role. Uh, in the future, uh, as Mr. C put it, whatever the market can do well should be left to the market. Like this one. Can be specific. <laughs> are we talking? I mean, in the document it said land prices, water prices. Right. I mean, I mean, we, you think that's going to happen quickly? Energy prices, land, water prices. You think it will happen eventually? Oh. Okay. I must say eventually. <laughs> okay. Um, what about you, Will? What What was your takeaway? What do you think the most important thing? If If they can do it, what do you think the most important reform was? Well, I mean, I, I mean, first of all, I think that everyone should everyone should recognise that actually it is this to get this together this quickly was um, extraordinary by Chinese standards. And the reason why it was extraordinary was because um, the situation is so desperate. That's the first point to make. Uh, I mean, what, I, what Ben and I have been saying is the situation. Um, and I think that speaking of the minister, I mean, I think agree with him. I mean, I think that I mean, this is an attempt. I mean. Uh, if you know China, I mean, this is an attempt by actually taking out, by taking out the state from setting prices in key sectors uh, and trying to make it more market driven. You are trying to remove one of the you know, principal causes of widespread corruption because, of course, it's rigging the, it's rigging the, it's rigging markets and officials paying each other uh, or accepting bribes from quasi entrepreneurs to rig the markets. It actually is one of the root causes of corruption and thus the legitimacy of the party and actually the misallocation of resources. So I have to say that 
But in the context of what I and Ben were saying, I mean, um, I think that the, um, you know, the, the, there really wasn't an, an enough, to my mind, to go the next step and kind of depoliticize the way the state enterprises are run, or indeed, and by, and by the way, because it can't be done, um, to address the problems of the financial system. I mean, recapitalizing the financial systems, crystallizing loan losses, having a phased program of sorting out Chinese finance is, is, is not possible um, because the financial system wouldn't hold if, it was, if there was sufficient transparency about the, the, the extent of non-performing loans. So, you know, what you have to hope is you have to hope you you know, depoliticize the system, you try and attack the corruption, you try and get some more effective allocation resources, you hope that that unleashes what Victor was talking about, and you hope that in that context you can actually attack, you can solve the, the, the problem of the financial system gradually, and actually by kind of delivering, you can sustain the, 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 legitimacy, the legitimacy of the party. This is the big bet. It's the biggest bet since 1979, and everyone should wear how big the bet is if it comes off, then I, Victor's right. If it doesn't, then, you know, the, uh, then there will be substantive political and economic change in China. And the reason why it happened so soon uh, was because the bet had to be made. Hmm. Um, can I question you on a couple of points? One is, um, <laughs> isn't it fair to say that corruption is endemic in many economies and we don't talk about imminent collapse in, in many of those? Um, I mean, India, uh, many parts of the Middle East, uh, although, wait, that's probably a bad example. Um, uh, do you, and I was going to ask you, do you think the leadership thinks they're in a desperate situation? Um, I'll start with that. Well, look, I mean, I think the, I mean, I think the, the, I, mean, the I, mean, I would agree with, I think, I mean, one of the things that I think Victor said, I think it was Victor said, I mean, you know, the people running China are really smart. And um, they've, um, they've, they've, they've piloted this thing through extraordinarily adeptly. And actually, they may be about to do it again. That's why I tried to say, that's how I ended my talk. I mean, I, we're all of us kind of, you know, it's, no one can be certain. Um, are the leadership aware of the situation? Absolutely. Um, whenever I talk to people um, off the record in China, or after a few drinks in, late at night in China, uh, or in Europe for that matter, you, you get very quickly to this issue. And actually, the figures that Ben put up showing the scale of the, of the Debt to, the, the increase in the debt to, to GDP ratio and what that represents. I mean, you know, Japan, when it got to similar de debt to, to GDP ratios, had you know, 20, the, the two lost decades. You know, the party can't afford two lost decades in China. So uh, is, the, is, the, is our leadership aware? You bet, you damn right they are. Um, about corruption, I mean, you're right, you know, there is extensive corruption in Southeast Asia and a lot of corruption in India. Um, uh, I, I think it's, uh, and I, I personally think that it's as problematic in those countries, um, and Latin America, and South, and South Africa for that matter, and some African states, as it is in China. It's one of the reasons I, I mean, my God, has the West got problems? Um, we all know them, and I can give you a long litany of those. But if you make, make a, uh, one, of the, one of the kind of, uh, I'm not somebody who takes the view that actually the West is in relative or absolute decline. Because I think that the, the, the models that are challenging it are so very flawed. It is very difficult to make way when actually so much is politicized, when so much is corrupt, when so much is bribed. And I, I'm, I'm not, I could be just, I'm as, I'm as damning as India in, in this as I am a China. I mean, we don't know what the figures are as a share of GDP. There are, there are numbers around which suggest it's you know, between 16 to 20% of GDP in China and between 10 to 15% in India. You know, you pay your money, you take your choice. But I mean, I, so your, your point is well taken, but it is ex the, my, my, my pushback is to just say it's extensive in China. And I thought the Bochelai trial you know, just revealed that. Um, uh, using my words against yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I would actually add something um, told to me by a, just partly to your point, told to me by a senior British military officer, they'd done a, an internal survey, I hope I'm not revealing state secrets, but uh, they'd done an uh, internal survey and found that their estimate was that 40% of the Chinese military budget was siphoned off in, in, through corruption, so quite a, quite a worrying statistic, I think. Um, ben, uh, I'd like to ask you what you thought the sort of most significant thing was out of the forum. And I'd also like to ask you just as a follow-up question to your talk is uh, if you think we're going to see uh, Japanese-style lost decades in China. 
So just the sure. Uh, yes, so thanks. Uh, like Will, I was a bit disappointed by the, uh, the outcome of the plenum. Um, I don't think it was anywhere near decisive enough, and I don't think that it showed anywhere near, near the, uh, the urgency with which these fundamental problems need to be addressed. That said, the, uh, the HOCO reform was, was yeah. what really struck me, because for two reasons. I think this, first, economic. If you can get this right, this really uh, unlocks a lot for China in, in multiple ways. Um, as we saw from some of those charts, the problem is there's a problem with underconsumption in China. People are saving too much. And one of the reasons they save so much is because this huge uh, section of the population, these migrant workers, anywhere between 150 and 250, depending on how you count it, um, do not have the, right to, the same rights as city dwellers to uh, health care, to education. There's a fundamental insecurity about their lives. If you can reform that system whereby they have similar access to welfare, my bet is that they will spend more, and that will help China pivot towards a consumption, uh, more consumption-reliant growth model. Um, it also would uh, reinforce some of the noises that the party has been making about, uh, uh, about the market. I mean, this, this is the, the, labor, the market is speaking. There's the, the cities are crying out for this labor, and the, uh, the bureaucracy and the state is standing in the way of it. So that would fundamentally uh, reinforce that message, I think, in it. In a good way, but the second reason I'm, I'm I would send, uh, to look at the registration, the household registration system, as the most important, one of the most important things on the agenda, is simply because of human dignity. Anyone who spent any time in China has talked to urban dwellers about their attitudes towards the uh, the migrant workers who live and work amongst them will know that it's it's very unpleasant. They are second class citizens and they are regarded as such. Reforming this, making elevating their status, making it clear that they have as much right to live and work and, and have a life, a productive life in the cities would be a huge step forward. Uh, so for those two reasons, I think I would choose that as the most important aspect. Oh, sorry, and also coming yeah. back to your question about the, the lost decade, I think it's a, it's a very real possibility and um, the, the, the fundamental uh, the, the, the fundamental most scary points about that contrast is that when Japan entered its two decades of a very low stagnant GDP growth, they were about 70% of the US levels of income per head, whereas China is now, depending on how you count it, around a fifth of the level of uh, the United States. 